Dr. Mayberry here, continuing our discussion of the upper limb. So we talked about the clavicle, we are now going to talk about the scapula. The scapula is your shoulder blade. Turn Gertie around here. Uh, this is Gertie. Uh, she is my, my best teaching friend here. So shoulder blade back here. Uh, there are a number of landmarks on the scapula, a lot more than there were on the clavicle. Uh, so part of, I think, where people get confused with the scapula is just not thinking about it thoroughly. So they'll look at it and they'll see this side that has a lot of things going on and they'll be like, this is the anterior surface, this is the front of the scapula. But it's not, it's the back of the scapula, it's the posterior surface. Because the posterior surface is the surface that's closest to the outside of your body. Okay, so put that in your head and don't forget it. This is the posterior surface. The anterior surface is this plain side. It's actually, there are muscles in there, but it's basically touching against your ribs. Uh, so there's not a lot going on there on this anterior surface, okay? So we're gonna start by looking at the lateral side of the scapula, which is this side that you are looking at in this video right now, okay? So this right here is the glenoid fossa. I like to start with the glenoid fossa because it makes sense to me. Uh, it's where your humerus articulates, so it's probably like the most concrete part of your scapula that you sort of realize exists every day. So the head of the humerus articulates right there in that glenoid fossa. Above the glenoid fossa is the supraglenoid tubercle. A tubercle is a bump, supra superior. This is a bump that is superior to the glenoid fossa. Glenoid fossa, supraglenoid tubercle. Below that, below the glenoid fossa, is the infraglenoid tubercle. It's a bump on the inferior surface of the glenoid fossa. Okay? So three things down just like that. Above even the supraglenoid tubercle is this big dangly. Okay, dangly is not a technical term. This is the coracoid process. Coracoid is a crow. This is a crow's beak. Okay, this looks like a bird beak. The coracoid process. So that is sort of coming off of the glenoid fossa, if you want to think of it like that. It's a muscle attachment, your rotator cuff, uh, all of these things are going on in here, so it's a very busy area. So coracoid process, okay? Uh, if we move along the scapula here, this is the superior surface of the scapula. So this is the scapular notch right here, and this is the superior border, and this is the superior angle. So all of these are on that sky side, uh, the superior side of the scapula, okay? Uh, so let's come in here. Uh, superior angle, superior surface here. This is the supraspinatus fossa, okay? I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. I'm gonna tell you that this is the scapular spine. So supraspinatus is superior to the spine. This is the fossa or dip that's superior to the scapular spine. So scapular spine, supraspinatus fossa. On the scapular spine up here, is actually the acromial process of the scapula. So you learned the acromial end of the clavicle and they're, they actually touch uh, in the body. So there's ligaments and cartilage and all sorts of stuff going on around this area, uh, but these are articulating, acromion to acromion. And they kind of look similar, okay? So that coracoid process there doesn't look like the acromion. It's much more slender. So if that helps you Remember, think of that skinny crow's beak. Uh, so scapular spine, acromial process. Below the scapular spine is the infraspinatus fossa. So inferior to the spine, a fossa or dip, okay? Supraspinatus, infraspinatus. Muscles sit in them, the supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus muscle, okay? So if we're down in this area, this side here, this is the medial border of the scapula or the vertebral border, because, as Gertie will show you, oops, this right here, that's that border, okay? This is your vertebrae. This is the vertebral or medial border. Medial is the midline of the body. So it's the border closest to the midline, which means that this slanted border here is the lateral border or the axillary border. Your axilla is your armpit. So this is the border that it actually makes up a boundary of your axilla. So axillary border. 
that makes this the inferior angle. It's the lowest angle uh, on the scapula. So you have the superior angle and the inferior angle down here. Okay. Let me look at my list. We also have, I almost forget this guy because it's on the anterior surface, subscapulus, subscapular fossa. Subscapularis sits in here, it's a muscle. Uh, but this is the fossa or dip that is basically under the scapula. So it's sandwiched right between the ribs, that muscle. So that is subscapula, subscapular fossa, if I could get the words out of my mouth. So the only thing that I've forgotten is the scapular neck. And the reason I forget it is because, you know, it makes sense when you have a neck uh, on the humerus because there's a head on the humerus and there's a neck on the uh, on the radius because there's a head on the radius but there's not a head on the scapula so why do we have a scapular neck um, just to confuse you no so this is the scapular neck so you can think of it as being like behind uh, that glenoid fossa area so my fingers are going around the neck uh, the reason you need to know a lot of these landmarks is because when we talk about our forensic casework, I'll probably say things like there were fractures along the scapular neck and you'll be like, what is that? So this is why you need to know these things. Okay, so there's that. Uh, I told you that the clavicle is articulating with the acromion, the humerus is articulating with the glenoid fossa, and so now we need to side the scapula, which should not be too difficult. The biggest mistake that I see people make is just sheer panic on their lab practical uh, and they put the scapula in like this as if it was a wing because it looks like a wing but I um, should tell you that you don't have wings you have arms so this is not a wing okay so when it goes in you have to remember that your humerus is articulating with that glenoid fossa so the glenoid fossa has to be lateral and we we named all these borders this is the medial or vertebral border because it's closest to your vertebrae. So as long as you use your common sense, you can put the scapula in properly. Suppose you could try to put it upside down, but again, you don't really have this big thing sticking out of your shoulder, so hopefully you would realize that that is not appropriate either. So that superior angle is, of course, the smaller angle compared to the inferior one, because you don't have a big ridge sticking out of your shoulder. Okay, so practice that. Um, breathe deeply on your lab practical and you probably won't mess that one up. Okay, so I will see you in a minute to talk about the humor.